What's up beautiful people? I hope you are well. This is your maths coach. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Before we begin today's lesson, I have a favor to ask you. To help this channel grow, please subscribe and press that bell icon. Also, please share with your friends and your family and your neighbors, anybody that may benefit from the content on this channel. We are now gonna be looking at quadratic factorizing. Quadratic factorization is slightly different to the factorization of linear expressions, okay? Now, the way to notice whether you're dealing with a quadratic or not is to look out for this um, format. There are some quadratics that are not always in this particular format. It may have the middle term missing, okay? But it's still a quadratic that requires a double bracket, which we will look at later on. Quadratics have this x squared, plus a value of an x plus just a number, okay? Or they will have a 2x squared or a 3x squared or a 5x squared plus 3x here plus 1 or something like that, okay? So this is the sort of general format that you know when you have this that you have to use double brackets multiplying uh, with each other that I'm going to be looking at in this lesson. There is a method that you can use where you just put down two empty brackets and then you just start filling things in. So for example, you'll just start filling values in and then you'll work out what these numbers here should be. Um, but I will leave that for later on in this lesson. The method that I want to use in this lesson is called the AC method. Now, why am I going to use this method over this method? Is because the AC method is very robust, it's very systematic, it's going to work for you all the time in an exam, whether it's like this or whether the quadratic expression is like that. And in fact, there will be some um, um, questions where you have higher values here like for example 5x squared plus something plus something and you have to resort to using the AC method anyway because it becomes too cumbersome to sometimes put it into uh, this you're going to spend more time thinking and, and trying to figure it out whereas if you have one method that works for you it's going to work across the board for any quadratic as long as it can be factorized and it's not um, where you have to use complete the square or um, the quadratic formula, okay? Which I have lessons planned for those as well. Now, the AC method, the reason it's called the AC method is because if you look at the quadratic that you are going to deal with um, and you look for these A, B and C terms, then you take the A and the C terms and you multiply it. So you this is where you get the AC name for it, okay? But the name doesn't really matter because it's the method that counts, okay? So in this case, what is my value for A? The value for A, remember, is a 1 here, okay? So A equals 1. The value for B, the B value is plus 11, a positive 11. The value for C is plus 24, okay? Now we're only interested in the A and the C because we are going to multiply the A and the C, okay? and we are going to find the factors of A and C. So here, in this case, it's going to be A value is 1, and the C value is 24. So 1 times by 24 is a positive 24. Now, it's really, really important that you actually include the sign here, whether it's a positive 24 or a negative 24. All right, next, what we're going to do is we are going to find the factors of 24. So the first one is 1 and 24. And we're going to go down the list systematically. So 2 and 12. Uh, next, we've got 3 and 8. Uh, then we've got 4 and 6. And you'll begin to notice when you come to the end of your factor list is when these terms start getting closer and closer together. Okay, So 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12 and 24 are all the factors of 24. But what we are looking for is which of these combinations, because we're going to use them as their pairs, Okay, give us the middle term, which is the B here, the B value, 11, a positive 11. Now, because we want to get positive 24, we can either have both numbers, and this is a reminder for you in case you need it, where um, when you multiply um, numbers, two positives, when they're multiplied, give you a positive. Two negative numbers, when you multiply them, give you a positive. So because we want a positive 24, these numbers here, these pairs, they can either both be positive, or they can both be negative, okay? 
One can't be positive and the other one negative because when they multiply, it would give us a minus. Okay, and we don't want a minus, we want a positive. Okay, now why is that important? Because we want to make an 11. So obviously 1 and 24, there's no way you can make 11 from there because you could either make 25 by doing 24 plus 1, which is 25, or you can make 23 by taking them away from each other. Okay, again, 12 and um, 2 here, sorry, uh, again, 2 and 12, we can make 10 or we can make 14, that's not good to us, we are looking to make 11. 4 and 6, we can even make 10, we can add them to make 10 or we can take them away to make uh, 2 or minus 2 or something, okay, but we can't make 11. The numbers that we are looking at are going to be 3 and 8 because if we have both of them as pluses, okay, plus 8 plus 3 gives us 11 and that's what we need. So these are the pairs that we will take forward. Now the process after you've identified this is very, very simple. If I just rub this out, okay, the process works as follows. The A and the C which you've already used to get the 24, okay, you'll just rewrite them. So x squared and plus 24. Now this middle 11x is going to be written as a combination of 3 and 8x with an x involved, okay? So you're going to add plus 3x plus 8x. Plus 3x plus 8x gives you that middle value here, which is 11x. The next step is to separate them by missing out on this sign that appears here by separating them like this, okay? Now, I will do more examples, so you're going to start to get the hang of this and what I separate and what I leave out, um, so on and so forth, okay? And also this, um, when they're positive, when they're negative, when I use which number, when I don't. After a couple more examples, you will get the hang of this and you'll start to see what I am doing here, okay? So now, what we're going to do is we are going to um, factorize these as single brackets, like we did uh, when we were factorizing single brackets. So, what's the common numbers between them? Well, there's a 1 here and there's a 3 here, so we'll really take out a 1, but we don't need to write that. What's the common uh, variable? x squared and x, so we can take out a minimum of 1x, and we can open up our bracket now. So, x times by something should give us x squared, x times by x gives us x squared. Positive sign for that. And we'll add the 3 here, so x times by 3 gives us 3x. So can you see this is the factorization of that? Next, this sign here, we'll just add it along. It's a positive sign. And we now will factorize the second um, bracket here, if you like. So 8x plus 24. 8 and 24, the highest common number between them is 8. And there is no x on the 24, so we won't take out an x will open our bracket. So 8 times by what should give us 8x? We want an x here. So 8 times by x gives us 8x. The sign here, we've already got a positive here, so we want a positive there as well. And 8 times by what should give us 24? 8 times by 3 gives us 24. So we, before I go any further, we have factorized those two brackets individually, okay? Now you should, at this stage, notice something if you've done this correctly. You will notice that these two brackets are identical. They have the same sign and so on and so forth, okay? This means that you have done this correctly. A little tip for you in an exam, if you find that these two brackets at this stage aren't the same, that means you haven't factorized something correctly and you need to go back and um, f figure out where you've made a mistake. And you haven't come far anyway, okay? So you can go back quickly, make that adjustment, and then come back here. The final step that's left is to draw the two empty brackets here. In one of them, we'll go the, the bracket that you have, so which is x plus 3. And in the other one, can you see the outside here? What's left over? x plus 8. You will just add that as your second bracket. And it doesn't matter which way around you do the brackets, by the way. You could have done x plus 8 in this one and then x plus 3 in that one because they will multiply out anyway to give you that. And that is this factorize. You can get into the good habit of checking your answer 
what that means is if you were to multiply this out okay then you should end up with the original uh, question so let's just do that for the people who um, just want that reassurance here so x times by x is x squared x times by 8 is plus 8x then we move on to this one now so 3 times by x is plus 3x positive there and then 3 times by 8 is plus 24. So we will collect the like terms here. So x squared plus 11x plus 24. And that gives us what we or originally had at the beginning. So x plus 3 and second bracket x plus 8 is the factorization of x squared plus 11x plus 24. Okay, so on to our second example, we've got x squared minus 6x plus 8. Once again, we will identify what our a and our c values are. So here, we've got um, x squared, so the a value here is a 1. So I'll just write that down here, a equals 1. And our c value is a positive 8, so c is an 8. So 1 times 8 to give us our ac, that is going to be 8. There we go. Next, what do we do? We write down the factors of 8 in pairs. So, 1 and 8, 2 and 4. Okay, there's nothing else that goes into there. So, now that we've identified the factors of um, 8, we want to make minus 6. Remember the middle term? So, A and C give us the a whole AC and what number we need to multiply out and to get these factors. But then these factors have got to make, add up, or multiply, uh, sorry, they've got to add or subtract to give us the middle value for the B. Okay, so we want minus 6 this time. Now remember what I said, that because it's a positive, they can either both be positives, or they can both be negative. When they multiply out, they will give us that positive sign. And just in case you need a reminder of that, okay, when you multiply out numbers, Oops, sorry, I spelled that wrong. So multiply. And you divide numbers actually as well. So you can use it. When you multiply a positive times by a positive, it gives you a positive. When you multiply a negative times by a negative, it gives you a positive as well. However, when the signs are different and you're multiplying, so if you're multiplying a positive times by a negative, then you'll always have a negative answer and vice versa. So if you're doing positive times by a, uh, sorry, wrong way. If you're doing a negative times by a positive, then you are going to also have a negative answer. So uh, a nice way of remembering this is when the signs are different, it's negative, And when the signs are the same, it's always positive. That's a nice way of remembering that. Okay, so if I go back to this now, I want to make minus 6 here. So 1 and 8, remember both of them have to have the same signs. So either both positive, so positive 8, positive 1. So 8 plus 1 gives us 9. Or they can both be negative. So minus 8, minus 1. That can also give us minus 9. Okay, That's not good to us. We don't want um, uh, minus 9, we want minus 6. However, if you look at this one, 2 and 4. If they're both negative values, then minus 2 times by minus 4 gives us positive 8. And minus 2 minus 4, when we add them together, we get minus 6. So we want minus 2 and minus 4. These are going to give us our minus 6 when they're added together. So let's continue as before. Okay, so once again, you take the A and the C, which you've already used to get your um, value here. Okay, you're going to just write them down here, copy them out. Okay. And in the middle, you're going to write down minus 2 with an x and minus 4 with an x. So minus 2 with an x and minus 4 with an x. Now those two together, they make minus 6. Okay. Next, you're going to separate them 
leaving out that sign that you see here, okay? And you're going to factorize them separately. Now, I know that some of you have told me that red doesn't appear very well, so I'm going to try to use red as less as possible. Or was it green? I can't really remember. I think it was green, yeah. I don't use green anymore, and I won't be using green anymore. So thanks for that feedback, those of you who have told me that. Right, so um, once again, I want to factorize this. So x squared and minus 2x. There's no number that's common between the two, so I'll have to go straight into the x's. So x squared and x, so minimum they have is an x. Next, I want x here, so x times x is x squared, and then minus, I want a 2x, so I'll just write a 2. So one, look, look at this, so x times x is x squared, x times minus 2 is minus 2x. This sign here, you just drop down here and rewrite it. So 4 and the 8 was common, the highest common number between 4 and the 8 is a 4. There's an x here, but there's no x here, so you can't take out an x. It's not common between the two. So you want four minus 4 times by something here to give you minus 4x. What do you have? You have an x here. Now you want a positive 8, and you've got to be careful here, okay? Because often students, what they do is they just copy down that plus and they put it there. Don't worry about that. Remember, this is what you need to focus on. That times by that should give you the plus 8. So therefore, minus times a minus gives you a positive. So you want a positive 8. So 4 times what here? 4 times by 2. Now if you look at this, minus 4 times by x is minus 4x. Minus 4 times by minus 2 is a positive 8. And what else did I say to you? I said that you will notice, if you've done this correctly, that these two brackets are always the same. And voila, they are both the same. So what you just need to do now is write down in either of these brackets this and in the other bracket what's remaining and the last example um, I wrote the x minus 2 in this bracket and I did say to you that it doesn't matter the order so this time around I will write it in the second bracket that's just show you that it doesn't really matter okay and in here what will go in here what's remaining so x minus 4 and this is factorized now from this uh, quadratic expression and you can also check it out by multiplying out and you you will find that it actually adds up and gives us all of that okay hope that one you understood much better okay but with anything with anything you need lots of examples you know this is the thing with mathematics it's not just oh I'm gonna understand it after one example I'm gonna understand it with two examples Sometimes you need a graduation of examples, examples that are differentiated for you. You, know, you need to start off easy and you need to slowly put on the uh, difficulty until by the end of it you're fully, fully confident. Okay? And you also need to do this as well, guys. Mathematics isn't just one day. You don't learn something in one day and then that's it. Come back to it. In a few days' time, if you really, really want to test yourself that you've learned something, okay, try to get one of these questions um, sit down and write it down um, and, and see if you can do it. If you can't, go back, come back to this lesson, okay? Watch it all over again. This is the benefit of watching on YouTube, that you can come back and do the lesson again. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please share with your friends and family if you found this beneficial. And please help the channel to grow. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.